So, just to clarify, uh, so what you see on the left side is a time domain plot, on the right side is a corresponding frequency domain plot. Okay. And what we have tried to simulate is a 10 gigabits per second system, which means that uh, the symbol duration. So, so when do you, when, when is uh, bit duration different from symbol duration? Uh, when you have on off keying, when you have on off keying, you have, you have on, you are transmitting only one bit in one uh, bit slot. So, there is no distinction between bit duration, bit slot, symbol duration, symbol slot, bit rate, baud rate, everything is the same. Whereas, in uh, PAM4 for instance, each of these levels are representing you know either a 1 0 or maybe a, a 1 1. In PAM4, you have a 0 0 level, then maybe a 0 1 level and then maybe a, a 1 1 level and then maybe a or 1 0 level or a 1 1 level right. So, each bit duration or each uh, symbol transition that is where you start saying symbol because uh, that represents actually uh, 2 bits. So, bit rate is different from symbol rate there. Okay. So, for instance if I am transmitting PAM 4 and if I am transmitting uh, for instance, so this is one uh, symbol duration, this is the second symbol duration, this is the third symbol duration, this is the fourth symbol duration. The amplitude levels correspond to the uh, symbol level which could be different for depending on the sequence of bits. Now, you talk about uh, baud rate or symbol rate as if this is T b, your baud rate or symbol rate is 1 divided by T b. Whereas, your bit rate is, if it is PAM 4, it is symbol rate or uh, symbol rate multiplied by 2, because every bit is, rep every, every uh, symbol is representing 2 bits. Okay. So, what is uh, critical as far as the spectrum is concerned is the symbol rate symbol rate or baud rate. Symbol rate is equivalent to, when we say symbol rate that is the same as baud rate. Typically, you say symbol rate and not as baud rate. So, if I say 10 giga baud and you say it is uh, uh, OOK, what is the bit rate? It is 10 gigabits per Gbps. But if it is a PAM 4, then this is symbol rate is 10 gigabaud. So, the bit rate will be 20 gigabits per second, because each symbol is representing 2 bits. And if it is QPSK, that is going to be, is it 40? It is still 20, because it is only 2 symbols which is representing one constellation point, right. So, this is still a 20 Gbps. If it is 16 qualm, you are grouping four, four bits as a symbol, which means then it becomes 40 Gbps. The symbol rate is the same everywhere. Okay. Now, if you are the other, other uh, way of classifying or uh, signaling, uh, so one, one was grouping bits into symbols. But after grouping a bit into a symbol, you could still have it as return to 0 or non return to 0 or you could have what is called as RC pulse shape. Right? Uh, if it is return to 0, if it is non return to 0 during the bit duration or during the symbol duration, the, the entire duration the amplitude is maintained as what it is supposed to be either a 0 or a 1. This is my entire uh, duration of my uh, symbol, it is continuing to be remaining as 1 and the next symbol is 1. So, that also continues to remain as 1 and so on. The amplitude level does not or the phase level, it, if it is phase modulation, it is a phase level. It does not drop back to 0 within the symbol duration. That is your return, non return to 0. 
if you do a Fourier transform of a non return to 0 uh, pulse for this uh, illustrative purpose it is O ok that is shown which means only one bit is coded in one symbol right. If I take the Fourier transform this is the center DC there could be a DC you see there is a DC here right average is 0.5. So, this corresponds to the DC and the first null this null will appear at your uh, symbol rate which is the same at same as bit rate in this case right. So, if I if I uh, had coded it at 10 giga bits per second the first null will is going to appear at uh, 1 into 10 power 10. So, this is appearing at 10 gigahertz. Ideally the um, frequency spectrum will spread to infinity minus infinity to infinity because every square the Fourier transform is a sink and sink extends from minus infinity to infinity. But in a practical system this 0 corresponds to it is not really DC it will correspond for a modulated data it will correspond to the carrier frequency it is not 0 anymore it is a carrier frequency because this is what you are showing here in the red is only the uh, envelope transitions right. So, this is your carrier frequency and this is carrier frequency plus 10 gigahertz carrier frequency minus 10 gigahertz. So, usually the occupied spectrum you, you try to transmit up to the first null ideally to reconstruct your PRBS or whatever you transmitted you need to uh, you need to have a, uh, a frequency band which goes from minus infinity to infinity because a Fourier transform is extending from minus in. But practically you know that that is not possible you have only band limited system. So, the rule of thumb is you you should transmit up to the first null right if so you could you could allow a bandwidth that is what ITU says that you allow a bandwidth corresponds to corresponding to the uh, separation between the two consecutive nulls uh, and the two consecutive nulls on either side of the carrier frequency if I account for that if for NRZ transmission it is 20 gigahertz ok. Now, if you do the same thing for return to 0 which means that during every bit slot the symbol goes back to 0. So, if it is a 1 it remained 1 and then it went back to 0 before the end of the next symbol. Uh, before the beginning of the next symbol. Here again one it went up and came down. So, more number of transitions are happening which means the bandwidth required is more. So, if you look at the location of the null it is actually this is just a Fourier transform of this uh, pulse there is nothing done you just pass it through an FFT routine right. So, you get minus 20 to plus 20. So, the separation between the nulls actually increased to minus 20. So, which means the occupied spectrum actually increased. So, if you were to transmit from minus uh, uh, the entire uh, spectrum between uh, the center or from first null to the second null two consecutive nulls on either side you will have to transmit 40 gigahertz which is why you say that the bandwidth required for an RZ system is double that of the non return to 0 system. But the question is there is something called as Nyquist bandwidth it is not Nyquist um, rate this is different from Nyquist rate Nyquist rate corresponds to your sampling rate the sampling rate should be at least twice the largest frequency that is your Nyquist uh, theorem. But there is something called as Nyquist bandwidth which says that can I do something in the time domain shaping in the time domain. So, that I need only a spectrum which corresponds to a total bandwidth of 10 gigahertz this is this is actually 0 0.5 and this is minus 0.5. Nyquist bandwidth corresponds to the minimum spectrum the minimum or the most packed spectrum uh, which is necessary to convey the information. So, if I have 10 gbps Nyquist bandwidth is actually 10 gigahertz that is all what is necessary, but how do you get to this. So, it is like if I uh, it is it is like this if I take the average here how do I my pack. So, all this is now getting packed to half of it. So, how do you pack it further in the uh, time domain you have to do some uh, in the frequency domain you have to do something in the time domain and that is your return to uh, sorry raised cosine pulse shaping which means you take the pulse put it through a filter which is a raised cosine filter 
and that race cosine filter will give you the Nyquist, uh, allow you to operate in the Nyquist, Nyquist bandwidth. But it requires some signal processing in the time domain. You have to apply a filter and so on. So, people do not do that, right. People do not do that unless you want to actually reduce your, uh, uh, increase your spectral efficiency, unless you are, you know, you have tried all other methods and this is the only way to uh, increase your spectral efficiency by packing the spectrum. That is when people start using this RC pulse shaping. In wireless system, they use something called as SRRC. If you have done any uh, digital signal, uh, digital modulation and coding kind of course, they use something called as square root raised cosine. So, the filter that the nature of the filter changes that is all. So, that is what is commonly used in um, wireless uh, systems, but in optical systems what is, I cannot say it is commonly used because it is not a standard, but in research labs people use this RC pulse shaping so, uh, so that you can pack. You can pack your uh, available data within the Nyquist bandwidth, okay. But all this is for, I said for OOK, but this is true for QPSK, this is true for 16 QAM, um, this RC and in a, 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 a return to 0 and non return to 0, even for phase modulation it is the same, right. This nature of the spectrum remains the same, okay. But even though we say that you need actually 20 gigahertz to, uh, uh, so, so if, you are, if you are doing an ITU grid, International Telecommunication Union ITU, the grid spacing, can somebody say what is the grid spacing, allowed grid spacing in an ITU grid, we have done it in problems. The, in a dense WDM uh, standard, the grid is, the, the frequency grid is spaced at 50 gigahertz, which means that the center, the carrier is here, right. The first null is appearing at for a 10 Gbps uh, system, the first null will appear at uh, this is plus 10, this is minus 10. So, how much efficiently are you occupying the grid? If I just say spectral efficiency, what would I say? It will say, it will, I will have to say that what is the um, bit rate divided by the bandwidth. If I say bit rate is 10 Gbps and uh, bandwidth is uh, 20 gigahertz now, right, 20 gigahertz, I will get a number half bit per second per hertz. But ITU is preventing me to keep the next carrier immediately after this. ITU will allow me to keep my carrier only after this spacing must be equal to 50 gigahertz. So, as far as the ITU standards are concerned, my spectral efficiency is only, is it, am I getting 0.5? I will get 0.5 only if I am able to keep the next one such that, you know, I am completely occupying the spectrum, but ITU standards are preventing me from doing that. So, as far as ITU standards are concerned, my spectral efficiency is only how much? I am occupying a spectrum of 50 gigahertz, whether my electronics is running at that speed or uh, that bandwidth or not, I am occupying a spectrum of 50 gigahertz and I am transporting only 10 gigabits per second. So, what is my uh, spectral efficiency as far as ITU is concerned, it is 50 gigahertz. So, this is only 0.2 bits per second per hertz. So, Whenever you calculate spectral efficiency, you have to also see the context. What is the spectral efficiency if I am operating on an IQ, ITU grid? I am occupying the entire 50 gigahertz, but I am transporting only 10 gigabits per second. Uh, so, from 10 Gbps standards, people moved actually to 40 Gbps standards. That was the next standard, where uh, it was still OK, but the bit rate was increased. So, 1 by 40, so it, it was 25 picosecond was the bit duration. And there what they managed to do was from 10 to 40, which means that the spectral efficiency went up to out of the 50 gigahertz. Now, they started occupying either side. So, how, how would that look like? This is center, first null would appear at, if I am doing 40 Gbps, O oh, ok, non return to 0, where would be the first null? With respect to the center on the right side 40 and the left side 40, which means that I started crossing the grid, right. 
this was 40 because the whole this is only 50 which means this side is 25 this is 25 I am actually occupying this. So, my bandwidth increased but it it did not. So, if I put my next uh, if I if I occupy my next very next channel what happens is I will start getting interference between you know cross talks. But one more thing is that you know uh, in a practical system you really do not want to get 10. So, this is two sided bandwidth that is again uh, one more uh, confusion. Do you really need the entire two sided bandwidth you do not. You need only in the, as far as the electrical system is concerned you need see you need both of this as far as the optical spectrum is concerned. But as far as the electrical spectrum is concerned are you detecting your if you are if you are doing on off keying are you even in uh, you know in case of uh, coherent transmission are you interested in your carrier you are not right. In coherent you are interested in the phase of the carrier, but you are not interested in the carrier frequency at all. So, if you strip it off you come back to your 0 and then are you interested in the negative uh, frequencies no the electrical bandwidth that is required is how much it is not 20 gigahertz it is only uh, half of it it is only 10 gigahertz. So, what we were talking about is the optical bandwidth until now. Now, if you were to actually put it into a receiver and electrical system the electrical bandwidth in fact for a OK you really are not interested in this sharp transition. You can afford to live with this kind of signal even then even if you have this kind of transition you at your decision boundary you can decide or at the decision time instant you can decide whether it is a 1 or a 0. So, you are not really interested in this kind of a signal you are ok with something like some roll off right. And what is the roll off what is the meaning of having a roll off in the uh, time domain it means that it is a reduced frequency in the re reduced bandwidth in the frequency domain. So, what is accepted is uh, for non return to 0 you need not you need not really transmit this even 10 gigahertz your receiver need to have only a bandwidth of 5 gigahertz half the bit rate is all what is necessary right. So, we talked about optical occupied spectrum that is still 20 gigahertz, but then as far as the uh, electronics is concerned if you were for example, if you calculate uh, you know the short noise and thermal noise and so on right in some of the problems you would have done that. What is the bandwidth that you really need for your electrical spectrum uh, or electrical system you need only half the bit rate if you are trying to use a on off key. But if you are using uh, a return to 0 that is not sufficient you will have to double that. So, those are some calculations as far as the bandwidth is concerned. So, electrical bandwidth for non return to 0 it is not even 10 gigahertz you need only 5 gigahertz. Optical occupied spectrum is 10 on either side that is where this first null is appearing right. So, that is 20 gigahertz for a uh, non return to 0.